parents, friends, family, mentors, faculty, MYP leadership, Mr. Eugene Lang, and my dear graduates, today is a very special day. Today you join the prestigious ranks of Lang Youth Medical Program graduates. Today, you join a distinguished group of alumni, many of whom are already pursuing great things. Former graduates like Henley Vargas, who is completing a fifth year at Vanderbilt University, where he is majoring in medicine, health, and society with a minor in philosophy. Prashush Narayan, who is double majoring in biology and sociology at SUNY Stony Brook and is on the pre-medical track. Joan Luzon, who is at Mercy College and is majoring in health science with a concentration in occupational therapy. Deoginis Montano, a student at the College of St. Rose and majoring in business. And Elizabeth Prado, who just graduated from Fordham University in May 2013 as a finance major and has been offered a full-time position at City Core. Like you, all of these graduates have overcome great odds on their journey to this point. And I know a little bit about this journey. I know that coming from an economically disadvantaged minority group does not just mean you have less money, less self-esteem, and fewer pipelines to process your dreams. It also means you have more barriers to overcome. This is what makes the Lang Youth Medical Program so special. It is a unique program that understands what it takes, what we need to succeed, mentoring, character development, social responsibility, and community service. Lang recognizes that our destiny is not written by one hand, but by many hands. Minority students, especially black and Hispanic students, are the most likely to drop out of high school and the least likely to, to pursue advanced degrees, especially in the sciences. We represent less than 3% of doctorate de degrees in science and engineering. Indeed, the number of underrepresented minorities applying to US medical schools is now decreasing. Today, only 5% of U.S. physicians are Hispanic, and about 3.5% are black. And yet, blacks and Hispanics bear a disproportionate burden of disease and premature death. So while it is important to improve cultural competence among all physicians and nurses, it is more important, perhaps, to improve the representation of underrepresented minorities in the physician workforce. When I was growing up in Africa, I met good people. For many, a gift was a piece of bread or sleeping under a mosquito net. Going to school was a fantastic dream. And I'm not talking about high school. For most African children, even elementary school is not a possibility. Adult literacy rates are well below 40%, and the situation is even worse among women. For many Africans, their only inheritance is the ability to dream. The ability to dream a dream about what you have accomplished today. When I look back in time to those years in Africa, I am grateful, not because of what I am today, but because of who I am, because I found my gift. And I, as I roamed the prestigious hallways of New York Presbyterian Hospital, I refuse to relinquish the memory of my medical school years. I refuse to diminish my roots, my foundation, to run from a place where even the very laws of nature 
appear different. Electricity was sparse. Lecture rooms were dilapidated. Operating rooms barely functioned. And the library was derelict. Even though my toilet was a poorly engineered hole in the ground, even though my room was unsanitary, I was the lucky student who could afford to buy books. I was the lucky student who could afford to eat three meals a day. During my clinical rotations, I would watch family members scramble as they were sent on a journey in search for hospital supplies that their loved ones needed. Husbands would haggle on gutter line streets for needles, for syringes, for vi vital pharmaceuticals with black marketeers. Impoverished mothers would offer anything to cold-blooded vendors in exchange for supplies that the hospital didn't have for their ailing child. And most of the time, when they return with these items, their loved ones will already be dead. Indeed, the screams of the bereaved still echoes in my mind. And yet, that is where I found my gift. I found it the day I made a choice to be the runner darting through African streets in my work clothes in search for elusive drugs and supplies for dying strangers, telling desperate mothers that I would help buy their needed supplies, Reassure, reassuring broken fathers that I already had a stack of syringes hidden away that I would use for their loved one. You see, this is where I learned what true success meant. I learned that true success is not defined by the size or the scope of our endeavors. It is defined by our ability to hear the cry of one heart and respond to it. And it is with this mindset that I crossed the Atlantic Ocean to the 16 years ago to these mighty shores. It is this mindset that I approach every patient encounter in my office or on the hospital stroke unit. It is with this mindset that I design every scientific research project or every lecture that I teach. It is with this mindset that I nurture my two young children. And it is with this mindset that I dream of a better tomorrow for all of us and not just a few. All of you will be attending four-year colleges or universities. Not in Africa like me, but here in America, the great land of opportunity. Seven colleges for seven promising graduates. The University of New Haven, Baruch College, Barnard College, City, New York, City College of New York, Smith College, Wheaton College, and the State University of Geneseo. Never let anyone tell you that you cannot make a difference, because you can. Knowing the good, you must do it. Knowing the beautiful, you must serve it. Knowing the truth, you must speak it. Do what needs to be done to get there. Do it fast. Do it slow. Do it alone. Do it with others. Do it in the moonlight. Do it in the daylight. Do it for free. Do it for the world. Get paid to do it. But whatever you do, never stop doing. Otherwise, it would not get done. Thank you.